بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد my brothers and sisters we continue with our series of khutab on raising children who are confident representatives of Islam and who will be a credit to us in this world and sadaqa jariya for us inshallah in the next world we looked at six points of focus and reference that we need to uh, inculcate which refer to, to traits of character and behavior that we need to inculcate in our children. Uh, let me come to point number seven. Point number seven is love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and love uh, in the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also included love for his family for the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah which refers to all his wives and to all his children. Not, it is not restricted to some of them. It is restrict, it is, it expands and includes all his wives and all his children. The love for Rasulullah is love, to be able to love and to inculcate this love for the one we owe our deen to. The deen is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Rasulullah to be the means, to be the conduit, to be the messenger, to be the teacher of this deen for us. So the deen is from Allah and the teacher is Rasulullah. So we the deen we got through Rasulullah. So love the one who used to who we owe our deen to. To love the one who used to weep for our forgiveness. To love the one who spent his entire life trying to get people into Jannah. Love the one whose life was the living tafsir of the Quran. The famous hadith of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqah where somebody asked her uh, to tell him something about the life of Rabbi Sallallahu and she said, don't you read the Quran? He said, yes, I read the Quran. She said, his life was the Quran. He was the walking Quran. Love the one, Jalla Jalla, love the one, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Jalla Jalla, who loves. Love the one whose last thoughts were not for his family, but for us. As he was dying, as he was passing from this world, his last thoughts, his conversation with Jibreel a. Salam, which is recorded and documented. He said, Jibreel, what about my Ummah? He didn't say, what about Aisha, who was sitting in the same room? And not just sitting in the same room, he was lying with his, with his blessed head on her lap. He didn't ask about her. He didn't ask about Fatima to Zahra, radiallahu anha, his beloved daughter who was there. He didn't ask about any of our other mothers of the believers. He did not ask about his family. He asked about his ummah. And that is why we need to love him. Love for the one who we hope to meet on the day of judgment. On his house. And we hope to receive the water of al kawthar from his blessed hand. We hope to say salam to him and we hope that he will recognize our salam and give us dua. Love the one behind whom we hope to cross the sirat into Jannah. So teach children the value of sunnah by following it yourself. For this, it is necessary for us to know who Rasulullah is and what the significance of our relationship with him is as the one whose way we emulate and follow. This must be the very first thing that we teach our children by word and deed. And remember the children that children listen with their eyes. They don't care what you say until they see what you do. So deeds come before words. And sometimes when the deed is there, the word is not required. There is a very dear friend of mine who I know will not want to be named because people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like to do things quietly. 
but his action is so beautiful and his and and what he told me is so beautiful that I must share it share the incident with you without mentioning his name and Allah knows him this is a person who is one of our musallis is one of my closest dearest friend he's also a neighbor of mine he's from Somalia so he said that in uh, in Somalia uh, where he lives his house is very close to the masjid right next door so he said that it was his practice in Ramadan especially to wait in the masjid until uh, Salatul Maghrib is over and until people have left and then he would say that if there was any stranger in town or somebody who had nowhere to go and and so forth those people would remain in the masjid he would say he said that I would bring those people home and I would feed them and they would eat with me and my family and then they uh, if somebody needed maybe somebody once in a while needed a place to sleep I would give them a place to sleep and so on he said this was my habit this is what I used to do he said then one time I was traveling in Ramadan and my wife said to me your son he said my firstborn he was 10 years old at the time my wife said to me that while you were away this boy brought people from the masjid home to have a meal and so on and so forth like you used to do and he did, he did that several times now imagine this friend of mine he never told his son you know watch what i am doing and you know you should do this and this is a good thing and allah will reward you and we must be kind to our guests and no there is no need to talk because the boy is listening is listening with his eyes he is watching what his father is doing and this this impression is so powerful that without anybody telling him anything he starts emulating that Alhamdulillah and of course one hopes that this is also conveyed to his other children and that these children will convey it to their children and so on and that this uh, Sadaqatul Jariyah this is a beautiful example of Sadaqatul Jariyah because this inshallah will continue from generation to generation to generation and that is what we need to do right to be able to speak with our actions and that is the reason why it's necessary for us to know who Rasulullah is and to follow him in word and deed. And as I said, the deed must come before the word. Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must be the most mentioned names in our homes. Not on any, uh, not just on any formal so-called religious edu- uh, occasion where you get the sheikh to come and you know talk and something no regular conversation while we are eating and drinking while we are going somewhere while we are planning something while we are talking about things which are happy while we are talking may Allah protect you from we are talking about things which may not be so happy which have which are which are which which you know make us more anxious or fearful every single thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallam must be part of the regular conversation in the house. Children must get used to this. In last Juma, I told you another beautiful story of another friend of ours whose little son at that time, he was, he was uh, probably three years old or so and what he did. If you listen to the last Juma, uh, you, will, you will get that incident. I don't want to repeat it here. Now, Allah and his Nabi alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam must be the reference points for all our actions, our culture, our celebrations, our events, our decisions, our happiness, our sadness. Everything must be in line with the orders of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and the Sunnah of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Does this please Allah? Is it in keeping with the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? These are the two operative questions that we need to ask ourselves and we need to teach our children to ask. Our children must get used to these two questions from birth. There should be no time in their lives when the name of Allah and the name of Rasulullah was not uh, audible to them on any day in their lives at home. The, uh, their absence of concern for the pleasure and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pleasure and concern for the, ple- the, the, the I'm sorry, uh, their, their, their absence of concern 
for the pleasure of Allah and for the sunnah of Rasulullah in any situation must be a point of dissonance for them and must give them pause to think. Point number eight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the importance of the sunnah of Rasulullah and recommended it as the best example to follow for the one who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and looks forward to the meeting with him Jalla Jalalu. As I said, you only look forward to things which are pleasant. Nobody looks forward to punishment. So if somebody is looking forward to the meeting with Allah, it means that this person has the best belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has the best expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will be forgiven, that he will be rewarded, that he will be, uh, that his, his, his uh, sins and his mistakes and his weaknesses in life will be covered up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment like Allah covered us in this life and this person has the and this person believes that this is going to happen to him and inshallah this is true this belief is true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and I in the zanni abdi bi I am for my slave as he wish as he believes about me so what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say a person looks forward to the meeting with Allah now who will look forward to the meeting of meeting with Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this as I mentioned to you and I in the zanni abdi bi is not just a, a, a sort of you know believe out of nowhere it's not something, I mean, you are free to believe what you want and may Allah make your best belief true for you. I've got, I've got no problem with that. But I'm saying that it is very unlikely that somebody who spent his whole life uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, doing all kinds of evil, that this person has the best belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, even if he has that, if Allah gives him, alhamdulillah, good for him. But logically speaking and according to what the Quran and Sunnah tell us, this would be a... Uh, a foolish kind of way of li living your life. If you really want to believe the best about Allah, then we need to try to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not anger Him. Right? Knowingly that something angers Allah, we do it. And then we say, no, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafur rahim. He'll forgive me. Maybe He'll forgive you. I've got, as I said, I've got no problem with any of that. But I'm just telling you, I'm warning myself and you, let us not play games with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, A'udhu billahi rajim laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana liman kana yarjullaha wal yawm al akhira wa dhakar Allah kathira Allah said which means in Surah Al-Hazab Indeed in the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you have a good example to follow for the one who hopes in the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day who hopes for the meeting with Allah and hopes for the day of judgment because he knows this is the day when he will be he will be rewarded and he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a great deal. Now, um, as I said, I'm not making tafsir of this ayah. I'm just explaining to you that this is something which uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, pointed out and gave us as an example to follow. He said the example to follow, the best example for you to follow is the life of my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and therefore follow it. Point number nine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the reward of following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love the one who does that. Right? Now think about that. Make that an aspirational goal for yourself and your children that you try to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit them down and ask them to write down and say, well, what do you, what kind of a scenario in your life do you imagine if Allah loves you? If you are one of the people who Allah loves, if your name is in the list of those Allah loves, right? Then think about that and say, if I am somebody who Allah loves, then how will this show up in my life? What will be the signs of this in my life? What will happen? Right? It's like thinking that if I become the president of the country, what will be the signs in my life? For one thing, I will change my residence. Right? I will go and live in the presidential palace. Then I will have a whole bunch of people around me and this will happen, that will happen and what not, what not. Right? Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who loves you, what will happen? How will your life change? What are the things in your life which are not there today, which will start happening because Allah loves you? Sit them down. You know, the issue of deen, unfortunately, we teach deen like we teach practically anything else, right? This is a formula of mathematics, this is a formula of physics, this is a historical incident, and that's why people are not interested in that and they're not interested in deen. 
Deen is an experiential issue. It is how you feel the Deen. So yes, there is a text aspect to it. There is a there is a um, you know uh, incident oriented aspect to it, and there is a rule oriented aspect to it. But everything has to be translated into how does it apply to me. So sit them down and say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said the one who follows Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who emulates Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah will love him. So if Allah loves you, how will that show up in your life? Right? How will that show up in your life? Sit them down. And then as a dalil, tell them the ayat of Surah Al-Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرْ رَحِيمٌ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to all the people, to all of mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me, emulate me. فَاتَّبِعُونِي Make my ittiba. Not just Itaat. Two different words. Itaat means obedience. For obedience, there is a hukum which must be there. For ita, for ittiba, there is no hukum required. Ittiba is a pure expression of love. It is emulation, it is imitation. Nobody tells you imitate me. They say obey me. Ittiba is imitation. Ittiba is just to do it because you love Allah, because you love Rasulullah. We make the ittiba, we emulate all kinds of people in our lives. We, will, we emulate all sorts of people in our lives. Right? So we need to think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ رَحِيمُ Allah said, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to all of mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me, emulate me, and Allah will love you and forgive your sins, and Allah is oft forgiving and most merciful. Teach them and remind yourself that the reward of following and emulating Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that you will be loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, no less. Reflect on what that means for you. Reflect on what that means for your dua. What is what about the dua of the one who Allah loves? Is it accepted or not accepted? What does it mean for mean for when you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most? At the time of our death when we will meet him on the day of judgment. To love anyone, it is essential to know them and so make the study, not merely reading. We don't even read. Not only do we need to read, but we need to study the seerah, the biography of Rasulullah. It is essential for you and for your children. And when we read about his life, his challenges, his dealings, his courage, his treatment of his followers, to love him is the natural outcome. If we study the seerah, it helps us to put our own lives in perspective and get encouraged and energized. Number 10, draw attention to the fact that following the sunnah is good for us in this life as well because all that Rasulullah taught and did are the secrets of popularity and influence. And when a Muslim follows them with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a sign of his love for Muhammad sallallahu he earns the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This once again is the relevance of Islam in modern times. The same rules apply. Number 11, teach them about accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. We we'll come back full circle. Islam begins with the principle of accountability and this is what we need to teach them. Teach them accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from whom nothing is hidden and to whom is our return. Every speech and action of ours must be done with this consciousness. This is the essence of dhikrullah, remembering Allah jalla jalla. Whatever act of worship we do, repeating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes, salah, tilawat al-Qur'an, fasting, charity and so on, are all means to achieve this end that is a consciousness of the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of them is an end in itself, but a means to achieve the end, which is to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying Him. So every time there is temptation to disobey, they must learn to ask, who am I disobeying? Not how big is the act of disobedience. There is no such thing as a small disobedience because the disobedience is disobedience of Allahu Akbar, the one who is the greatest. So they must ask, who am I disobeying? Not, is it 
okay, it's a small thing, big thing. No. Treating a disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a small thing is the biggest problem because then that's a sign of arrogance. You must understand that selective obedience is disobedience. And that the essence of obudiyah is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is Islam. To obey every command joyfully out of love for the one to whom we owe everything and to whom we will return. Connect them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being connected yourself. There is no other way. We can only give what we have. If we don't have it, we can't give it. So we need to inculcate it and develop it in ourselves first. Number 12, teach them service as the means whereby a Muslim defines himself or herself as a person who is most useful to society. Teach them the value of service in Islam as the means to earn the pleasure of Allah and to earn his forgiveness. Teach them that service is the signature of Islam, the signature of the Muslim. Service as the value that service is the value that differentiates a Muslim from everyone else. Through this, we will be able to answer the most common charge that Islam is no longer relevant to modern times because people will see Muslims being relevant and being uh, people who serve others. When Muslims are seen as beneficial for everyone in society and that because of Islam, then the relevance of Islam to all times and for all times will be proven beyond anything that anyone can say against it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Muslims being beneficial to others, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhurijat linnas. Allah said you are the best of people and you were extracted and selected for the benefit of people. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. You enjoy good, al-ma'ruf, and you forbid evil, al-munkar, and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the uh, hadith in uh, the Raqutni, the best of people are those that bring most benefit to the rest of mankind. Let us become beneficial to everyone in society. Number 13, teach them to be thankful to those through whom we receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. And that it is the best way to win Allah's pleasure and the goodwill of people. Imagine a society where Muslims are known for their attitude of gratitude, seeking to help others, solve their problems, uh, stand up for their rights and help those in need. Abu Huraira reported that Rasulullah said, the one who has not thanked, he has not thanked Allah, who has not thanked the people. And this is in Sunan Abi Dawud. Allah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, He has not thanked Allah, the one who has not thanked the people. Number 14, teach them to display our differentiators proudly and confidently, not arrogantly. In appearance, in our worship, in our dealings, in our speech and action. We must not blend in as some more numbers in an unidentified mass, but stand out as notable, valuable individuals. That is the secret of brand, differentiation. Brand inspires loyalty. Loyalty inspires influence. Without brand, you are one grain of rice in a sack. Number 15, and this is the last one. Teach them the four noble values of integrity, which is truthfulness, courage, compassion, and excellence. Four values. Integrity, which is truthfulness, courage, compassion, and excellence. These are the four core values of Islam, if I, may, if I can use that term. Anyone who lives by them can only be loved and respected, and as a result, become influential. Teach them to always speak the truth and be fair and just in all dealings. Teach them to have the courage to stand up for those in need, those being oppressed, and to stand by their principles, no matter who is displeased. Teach them to have compassion and to show compassion and to behave with compassion by helping all those who can't help themselves. Teach them to put their money and action where their mouth is and act 
instead of simply talking about values. Teach them to do everything they do and treat everyone they meet in the best possible way, no matter how small or trivial the action may be, or no matter who the person they meet may be. Excellence is to speak and act as if you see Allah. He said, Worship Allah as if you can see Him. And though you cannot see Him, know that He sees you. And this extends to every single aspect of life. This is the definition of Ali Hassan. Finally, we must remember. I say this again and again. Children listen with their eyes. Actually, everybody listens with their eyes. They don't care what you say until they see what you do. So raising children has less to do with children and more to do with parents. As you are, so will they be. And that is why they are your sadaqat wal jariya and not vice versa. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunana min al-khasiri ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على نبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته